What's going on guys? My name is Logan with West Desert Wheeler. It is a chilly one out here. I won't say cold. To me it's cold, but I know there's a lot of people that deal with like real deep snow all the time. That's your weather report. Today we're going to be driving the UTB18 and this time I've got a bunch of modifications on here. A bunch from Axial, wheels from Spec RC, as well as a Hobbywing 1080 and a Reefs Raw 400 servo, which is pretty wild just how aggressive this thing is. I mean, crazy fast speed, 400 ounce inches of torque, plenty of power for this little guy. Let's go hit the rocks and see how it handles today. You guys will see Sydney, my dog, running around in the background. Now, it has been raining about 10 out of the last 14 days, so that means that traction is just about gone because these rocks actually physically soak up water. Um, the sandstone out here is kind of interesting, and when it rains, it gets crazy slick as well as the sand sticks to your tires which uh, can cause real problems. So hopefully we'll stick more to rocks than sand today, but it's bound to happen. We're gonna get these tires all loaded up with sand. What tires are these? These are the Pitbull Braven Berserkers, and I'm using these stock foams on them, which are very stiff, especially for this weight of car. The wheels on there, again, the Spec RC 1.7 inch, and that is in the comp cut variety. That's his comp cut design. So you can run them very narrow, and then they bolt onto Vanquish hubs, so you can kind of select your width from there. And that opens up using tires in both the 155, which these tires are, I've just stretched them on, or you can run 1.7 varieties from RC four wheel drive. So one of my favorite upgrades so far has been the Hobbywing 1080 ESC. I'm still running the factory axial motor, but using that different ESC just gives it more uh, bandwidth on the throttle control. So. I have more feel for the throttle as well as because I switched out the ESC, I had to get a new receiver. So I put this on my Flysky Noble NB4. So the controller costs as much as the car, but hey, that's how it goes sometimes. So the 1080 ESC been around for a long time. This is not the G2, it's the standard 1080. Uh, great little ESC there, has been for a very long time for brush motors and is a bit overkill for this car, but it crawls really great and can take 3S power. So I'm running a 750 milliamp 3S battery pack. And also the benefits of using that bigger ESC is I get a better BEC, which sends power to your servo. So now my servo is getting more power than the stock system ever had. So it increased performance on my servo as well as my crawlability. Very nice, staying planted and predictable. That's why I like this car. That's how it handles and uh, just how it feels like a 10th scale, even though it's a lot smaller. Now I went into my local hobby shop the other day, Sky RC in St. George, Utah. If you're in the area, say what's up to Cody, stop by, check it out. But I committed to picking up some overdrive gears and uh, I hadn't asked the price yet. And I was like, all right, man, go ahead and uh, let's get some overdrive for this thing rings me up and it was like seven dollars so the overdrive in this is crazy cheap i was expecting like you know 15 bucks maybe 20 go more with like standard tent scale prices and uh no crazy cheap so be sure to pick up some overdrive gears from axial they are an awesome value and uh overdrive is always a benefit in your vehicle especially the lower amount like this it's definitely going to help you it's really not going to hurt you much it kind of in any situation this I think it's somewhere around 10% if I'm not mistaken you guys will have to let me know what percentage overdrive the axial gears give you but just a little bit to help it climb up and turn sharper and do all the overdrive things work great look how planted and controlled and look how planted and controlled and crawl how crawlable it is if that if that's a word we're gonna make it a word today So this is my first real trip out with the uh, axial upgrades, including the overdrive. It's the first time I've run them. I threw some Reefs gear grease on the portals as I installed them. And then I also did the aluminum link set from axial. Very cool color, no doubt. So I'm not getting flex in my steering links anymore. And just a smoother design underneath the car. So when I'm sliding across rocks, I'm more likely to just smoothly slide all the way over them. Here's what I'm talking about with the traction. So let's give it some throttle, see what she's got. Oh, 
Oh, grab, grab, grab. No, oh, dang. Too late. Now, I don't expect this obstacle to go well for this car, but hey, we got to try, right? We got to see where the limits are. So sometimes you got to try the impossible stuff, see what happens. Another awesome upgrade I've added to the car is axial portal weights. I really enjoy that Axial themselves made the upgrades for these cars available right when the car launched because it just ensures fitment and uh, function with their own car. So that's always, it's always a nice warm blanket, isn't it? Just buying the parts that you know are going to fit and function. So I've got brass portal covers on the front only. Um, I wouldn't suggest doing brass portal covers on the rear of your car. Typically you want a forward weight so that when the front end climbs up over something, it pulls the rear end through. Yeah, that right rear is just gonna stop us from making any forward progression. Uh, see how much power that servo has, even under the whole weight of the car, I could still wiggle it. Yep, not making that one, no surprise. So you guys will have to let me know if you picked up a UTB 18. Are you liking the car? Are you liking the platform? What are some of your favorite upgrades you've thrown on your car? Honestly, all the axial upgrades were very reasonably priced and you could do portal brass, aluminum links, overdrive for a very reasonable cost and really increase the performance of your car. You don't have to buy as fancy of wheels as these to get the benefits of the lower weight. However, these spec RC wheels do look really, really good on there. And it gives you the option of 1.55 and 1.7 tires. And I've mentioned this many times with these cars, I really enjoy how they handle. It acts like a tenth scale. It acts bigger than it is. It's predictable. The oil-filled shocks really make them awesome. It's got just enough weight down low at this point where you can hang tires and get it in funky situations and it will stay planted and predictable. And that's really important for a crawler. Uh, that's my complaint with the 24th scale stuff. I know a lot of people will make them three inches wider and four inches longer and then they don't feel like a 24th anymore. Well, I'm not really interested in making them that big. Kind of similar to this car is uh, a lot of people are doing like stretch wheelbase, crazy wide, bigger axles. And I'm like, well, at that point, I'll just drive a normal Capra. So I'm probably gonna leave the wheelbase and the width about where it is. Nice and lightweight car still, very small, easy to pack around, and they, and they crawl great. It's a fun little pastime right here. Sydney's out here running around on the rocks with me. She always loves coming out and crawling. I just realized the exact spot I'm in was actually a Trail Hero Trail Breaker qualifier course. So people were driving their real buggies through this stuff, which is pretty wild. I actually have a video on it if you guys want to go back and check it out. Uh, it was a... I think two years ago now. So a little over two years, the car on the thumbnail is black and orange. It's got a number eight on the side. That's actually my buddy, Jeff Rubico, driving that car. I used to spot for him in the competition season in 2021, I think. I'm pretty bad at dates, but super cool to watch those cars just push the limits and see their full potential used out here on the rocks. It's really cool to see them push it in those cars because they do some wild stuff. They go places that you can barely walk or climb on all fours. <laughs> well, not enough traction down in the bottom of this one. Struggling to get over this rock because it's down in the bottom of this crack and it's cold and wet and uh, the sun doesn't really get down here very much. 
Oh, hey, it worked. When in doubt, throttle out, right, guys? Or maybe not. There we go. Just give ourselves a little uh, rescue. <laughs> Come on, baby Capra. I think that's the unofficial name of these cars is Baby Capra. All my friends call them that. Yeah. Found ourselves in a bit of a pickle there. Let's see if we can continue on the rocks where they're solid. Still wet and slick though, and now our tires have a bunch of sand in them. There's a little ledge in the bottom of this climb. So we gotta keep our rears balanced, but we may need a little momentum. But we have to hit that crack in a way that won't force our car to do something funky. Trying to crawl at first. Not happening. So let's back up just a little bit. That's our line right there, and let's just give it a little throttle. Wow, didn't go much, didn't go very far at all. If you guys are wondering what that white sticker on my roof is, that is from our live stream that we do on Instagram every Thursday night. Me and my friend Luke. On Instagram, his username is scumbagrc. He's also got a little 18th scale capper that he's been building and working on. And uh, every Thursday we do a live stream and just hang out and talk for at least an hour. And we bring on awesome guests in the RC industry, as well as just our friends who are, uh, you know, they live the lifestyle like we do. Or it's just RCs all the time. Don't think this is UTB18 rated, unfortunately. Hey. Come say goodbye to everybody. Say goodbye. Okay, bye-bye. So guys, that was a fun run with the Axial Capra UTB18. These are the modifications I've put on it so far. I've got a couple more in mind. Nothing too wild from here. I'm really liking how it's performing and I'm having a good time with it out on the rocks. In all of my videos, I leave links to my merch down below. You can always pick up a West Desert Wheeler shirt if you'd like. You can help support the channel doing that. And I mark down all of the kids apparel, zero dollars. So I don't make any money on that. I just want little dudes running around in the WDW gear. That's pretty rad to me. I appreciate your guys' time. Be sure to hit the affiliate links. Another way you can help support me there and check out westdesertwheeler.com. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We will see you in the next one. Keep the rubber side down.